Largest miniature in 40k history. There's a high likelihood you've seen a video from Squidmar about building the Tau Manta. The Tau Manta is a bit out of my price range at the moment, but I've decided to paint up my very own Tau battleship, the Tiger Shark, from Aeronautica Imperialis. <laughs> Welcome to Hobby with Ollie. My name is Ollie, and this is my hobby. So I cover a lot of Warhammer 40k on the channel, particularly my beloved Blood Angels. But there's one game that has a real spot in my heart, which I don't see as much content for on the YouTube platform. That is Aeronautica Imperialis. It's a game that I have fond memories of playing when it first came out at a local gaming store. I've also picked up a couple of the box sets, including the one with the Tau Aircast versus the Astra Militarum. As with so many hobby projects, as you can probably relate to, the Tau have remained unpainted and just sitting around in their box. That all changes today because I'm going to paint up my first ever Tau model. I'm actually not sure if it's pronounced Tau, 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 but regardless, the apostrophe in the spelling is a pain in the ass. As per the description in the Taros Air War book, the Tiger Shark operates primarily within a ground support role, deploying a shower of remote weapon platforms over a battlefield while strafing opposing ground forces with ion cannon and missile pods. It's also flat enough to mistake for a credit card at this scale, but I'd recommend against trying to use it to buy anything online, as when I did, all of my wealth got taken out of my bank account and redistributed equally. Thanks, space communists. Anyway, enough messing around, let's get this guy to the painting table. In order to get this Tiger Shark all painted up and serving the greater good, I'm going to be using my airbrush today. I'm laying out the things that I'll need. First off, the airbrush, a little holder that I've pinched from a soldering iron, some airbrush thinner, an airbrush cleaner, and then I've got my grey primer, which I'll give a little shape to. I'm also going to need a little pot and an old makeup brush for mixing. The final component is the compressor. Now, I've just got a cheap compressor off Amazon, so you don't need anything fancy here. The next step is just making sure that everything's okay, so I pour a bit of water in and I've got a bit of bubbling coming back. There's a problem with my airbrush, which is that the nozzle tends to be a little bit loose, so I'm just gonna give that a bit of a tighten with my hand. And this time it's spraying water just fine. So it's time to put in our primer. Now next, I get one of the most riveting steps that I've ever filmed on camera, which is priming a grey model with a grey priming spray. What on earth is the point of this? If you're new to miniature painting, it is still important to prime your models to give any future layers of paint something to stick to. So here we go, you can see absolutely no change whatsoever. Brilliant work, Ollie. All right, let's get some visual interest into the mix. I'm adding a bit of McCrag blue into a blend of my grey primer and a little bit of white. I'm mixing this up in a pot and then adding a few drops of airbrush thinner to make sure that it's at the right consistency. You want to make sure that your paint is coming out at the consistency of milk. So a little bit thicker than water, but it should still flow nice and smoothly out of the pot into your airbrush. After I've poured that paint into the paint cup, I'm now going to do a few quick test sprays just to make sure that all the paint is coming out as I'm expecting. Once I'm happy, I'm going to apply this to pretty much all of the model. I'm going to start from the highest areas that will be catching most of the light, just like I would if I was painting with a paintbrush. Next, I added a bit more white into the mix and went over things like the wingtips, as well as any sharp armour panels. This serves a similar purpose to our edge highlighting when we're painting, but the advantage of using an airbrush is you can get much, much smoother blends between the different colours. Don't be afraid to add in a few more drops of airbrush thinner if your paint isn't coming out of your airbrush in a smooth stream. What you'll see me do here is in order to get a really good mix, I'm actually doing some blowback airbrush mixing. So I'm putting a little cap over the top and deliberately blowing back into my airbrush in order to mix up the paints a bit more effectively. It was at this point I realized I'd been neglecting the bottom of my plane. But no worries, all I did was mix up some of my darker paints and go in and fix it up now. You don't really need to highlight up as far on the bottom of the plane because whenever you're playing Aeronautica, you'll only be seeing it from above anyway. At this point, because I was focusing on some of the details, I actually turned down the pressure on my air compressor. 
so that I'd have a bit more control over the paint that was coming out. Make sure that if you are going to be doing any miniature airbrushing, get yourself compressed with one of these on, as I made that mistake when I first got started. Now that I've added a good amount of white in here, I'm just focusing on the very wing tips and the most raised areas. It was at this point that my airbrush started getting a little bit clogged up, so all I did was I just ran it into some airbrush cleaner on a rag. This tends to sort it out at least temporarily so that I can continue painting. I was happy with the highlights I was getting, but the colour wasn't quite bright white enough. What I did was I took a paintbrush full of the paint that I'd been using so far and mixed it in with pure white. Then, with this really bright white colour, what I did was I mixed it down with a load of airbrush thinner and then used it just to kind of bring up the brightness value on the model. This helped to take it from a greyish blue to actually looking white. White is notoriously difficult to paint, but so long as you start from darker than you think and highlight up to pure white only on the very edges, you can't go far wrong. And here we have the completed white armour. Next up, let's start adding in a few little details just to bring it to life on the tabletop. I'm going to start off with the silver details. I'm using gunmetal from Vallejo, and I'm doing this on the engine casing, as well as any guns across the model. Next comes probably the most satisfying part of the whole paint job, non-oil over all the metal parts, and then also into all of the panel lines. This gives us some real contrast and really starts to make the model come alive. I thinned down my non-oil here with a lot of Lamy medium so that it would flow really nicely into the recesses and set to work. It's probably one of the most satisfying things in miniature painting, watching your recess shade flow in super easily like this. What's your most satisfying painting moment? Let me know down in the comments below. Here it is with that step all completed. Still looking a little bit monochrome, so it's time to add a little bit of a splash of colour. I decided to do this by using some of the markings that I saw on the cover of the Taros Air War book. They've got this sort of weird alien computery sci-fi look to them. I decided to use Jacaro Orange just to really give a very vibrant colour to contrast the white. I started by sketching in the outlines of where I wanted these markings to go, and once I was happy, I started filling in between the lines. Using this method helps you get a much, much neater finish, which is great for someone like me, who's not necessarily the neatest painter. I decided I wanted a final pop of colour, so I added some sort of pink jump jets to the back of the plane. I started off painting white, and then got lighter and lighter with my pink colours. With that step completed, I did a few final cleanups, including adding a layer of chrome just to highlight the silver, and called him done. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Hobby with Ollie. And if you're an Aeronautica fan, let me know what you're painting in the comments down below and how you think I did on today's paint job. In the meantime, my name has been Ollie, this has been my hobby, and I'll see you next time.